Welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos. Let's get this show on the road. So I think it's about time that I respond to part, just in part for the time being, respond to Jeremy Runnell's CES letter, which is world famous by now. And I have a particular part. I read it again just the other night. I have a particular part that for Reasons unbeknownst to me did just, it just did not ring with me. It did not strike me until this time through it. And so I'm going to take a couple of moments and read the entire part of this and share my thought. Prophets. Concerns and questions about prophets. The Lord will never permit me or any other man who stands as president of this church to lead you astray. It is not in the program. It is not in the mind of God. If I were to attempt that, the Lord would remove me out of my place. President Wilford Woodruff. Keep the eyes of the mission on the leaders of the church. We will not and cannot lead you astray. Elder M. Russell Ballard. Today, the church disavows the theories advanced in the past that black skin is a sign of divine disfavor or curse or that it reflects unrighteous actions in a pre-mortal life. The 2013 Race and the Priesthood essay on the church's official website, lds.org. Prophets, seers, and revelators. Throwing yesterday's prophets, seers, and revelators under the bus over yesterday's racist revelations and doctrines. So he says this on pages 68 and 69, 67, 68, and 69. And I would like to read this and give you my response. President Brigham Young taught what is now known as the Adam-God theory. He taught that Adam... Now, this is Adam from the book of Genesis. Adam, as in Adam and Eve, the first mortal on earth. This is the Adam Brigham Young is talking about. He is our father and our God, and the only God with whom we have to do. Brigham not only taught this doctrine over the pulpit, in general conference in 1852, but again in 1854. But he also introduced this doctrine as the lecture at the veil in the endowment ceremony of the temple. 
So Brigham also published this doctrine in the Deseret News on June 18, 1873. How much unbelief exists in the minds of the Latter-day Saints in regard to one particular doctrine, which I revealed to them and which God revealed to me, namely that Adam is our father and God. I do not know. I do not inquire. I care nothing about it. Our father Adam helped to make this earth. It was created expressly for him, and after it was made, he and his companions came here. He brought one of his wives with him, and she was called Eve because she was the first woman upon the earth. Our father Adam is the man who stands at the gate and holds the keys of everlasting life and salvation to all of his children who have or who ever will come upon the earth. I have been found fault with by the ministers of religion because I have said that they were ignorant." But I could not find any man on the earth who could tell me this, although it is one of the simplest things in the world, until I met and talked with Joseph Smith. So, contrary to the teachings of Brigham Young, subsequent prophets and apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have since renounced the Adam-God doctrine as a false doctrine. And of course, we are mostly familiar with Spencer W. Kimball. I remember hearing this as he spoke it in General Conference on the October 1976, and he said, We warn you against the dissemination of doctrines which are not according to the Scriptures and which are alleged to have been taught by some of the general authorities of past generations. Such, for instance, is the Adam-God theory, we denounce that theory, and we hope that everyone will be cautioned against this and other kinds of false doctrine. Okay, well, in addition to Spencer W. Kimball and similar statements from others, Elder Bruce R. McConkie said, the devil keeps this hearsay, the Adam-God theory, alive as a means of obtaining converts to cultism. It is contrary to the whole plan of salvation set forth in the scriptures, and anyone who has read the book of Moses, and anyone who has received the temple endowment, has no excuse whatsoever for being led, led astray by it. Those who are so ensnared reject the living prophet and close their ill ears to the apostles of their day. And that's in his world infamous discussion, the seven deadly hearsays. Now, Brigham Young, and this is mentioned by Corbin Voluse in his article, uh, which I will reference in the uh, description. I will give you the link to his article on the Adam God cover-up. Corbin says that Brigham Young, and he shows the quote, he shows the, the, uh, the reference and the quote, as all good historians do. He said that Brigham Young taught that those who don't believe this doctrine will be damned. Now, while Jeremy Runnels here does not quote this part of Brigham Young, he also does not quote Bruce R. McConkie, who said that if you believe such false doctrines as the Adam-God doctrine, you will be damned. So you are damned if you do and damned if you don't. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> they have set it up <laughs> so that it is impossible <laughs> for you to be exalted. <laughs> You're doomed. <laughs> I'm 
sorry. That just that just now strikes me as being hilarious. <laughs> such are the oh, such are the convolutions of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints doctrines. Oh my. Okay, so continuing on with Jeremy Reynolds. <laughs> Page 69, I've got to quit. It's not that funny, <laughs> even though it's hilarious. Okay, so, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> Elder McKinnon, <laughs> come on, Gary. Okay, okay, now, totally serious. <clears throat> ironically, Elder McConkey. In June 1980, his condemnation asks you to trust him and President Kimball as today's living prophet. So furthermore, McConkie is pointing to the endowment ceremony as a source of factual information. And the question most appropriately asked here by Jeremy Reynolds in the CES letter that I have never heard very much discussion about is what about the endowment ceremony of their day when Brigham Young taught the Adam God doctrine as part of the endowment at the veil what about the saints in Brigham Young's day who were also following their living prophet? And this lecture at the veil persisted for almost half a century as Corbin Valu's notes in his article, which I will put in the description, the link below the video. That is a sensational article and even better than the article sincerely are the comments and he interacts really well. It was a 2016 article. So this shows the main problem with the nature of how the church has set this kind of baloney up. Yesterday's doctrine is today's false doctrine, and yesterday's prophet is today's heretic. My response to Jeremy Runnels, the CES letter, in this part of his letter, that's a very excellent point, young man. And I'm really grateful that I read this letter again and it sunk in. So thanks for watching the Backyard Professor Responds. I'll be back with a lot more. I appreciate your support and your donations. Love all you guys. We are having fun exploring the ins and outs of Mormonism and their really weird ways of dealing with history. They're really warped ways with dealing with doctrine and their absolute heinous deceptive ways of dealing with money. Your money. <laughs>